We've got an article here from Pocket Lint, and it says that the iPhone 12 won't have a notch. Well, mm. notch talk, 2020, still 19. 2020 when you're watching this. Yes. Notch talk, 2020. Uh, the notch has been about the face ID. The, old, the good old-fashioned face ID. That's what the notch has been about. Mm -hmm. dot, those, dot projection. All those sensors. Just mapping your face. Yep. Well, And so it's like, okay, here's this patent emerges. A patent emerges. And guess who found the patent? Let's go digital. Let's go digital. They're the patent hunters. You don't even have to look at patents because they do it for you. Mm -hmm. Anything that's flowing through, anything anyone's making. And they render it too, right? Sometimes. Yeah. Well, they, they partner yeah. with renderers yeah. as you would if you needed a render. Shout out. You could go talk to Concept Creator if you want. Or you could talk to 91 Mobiles. Yeah. I mean, everybody knows the renderers. Mm -hmm. All the famous... You got the leakers and the renderers mm -hmm. and the patent hunters. What a community. And then, and then us. And then, and then us. you got yeah, us. We talk, <laughs> we talk about all of them. We let them all know. Anyway, so this uh, patent filing, uh, around Christmas, this thing came out. And as you can tell, the phone that they're showcasing for the patent filing has no notch on it. Instead, it has a, a slight bezel to it and an earpiece inside of that bezel. So you're sitting there wondering, okay, uh, is this really the iPhone 12 or is it some other project? So the headline states that it could be the iPhone 12. Uh, but then as you read a little more deeply, it says, hey, possibility here, this could be that rumored iPhone SE. Because another thing you'll notice here is being all screen you could potentially find a spot to hide an in-display fingerprint scanner, which is what a lot of people have been talking about, rumoring the re-emergence of Touch ID in the absence, potentially, of Face ID. So as a way to kind of differentiate the two different segments, obviously the SE model would be the entry level, the affordable model, and... You don't want to cannibalize the sales at a premium model. So maybe you say, this one's got face ID. This one's got touch ID in display. Mm -hmm. And you have those two variants. And so then, therefore, you don't have to have the notch because there are no components for the face ID. Mm -hmm. But that said, the way that this patent is showcased, it doesn't really tell me much either direction because that bezel looks large anyhow. Yeah, on all sides. On all sides in 2020. Yeah. Is it exaggerated for the purpose of the patent filing? Is the patent filing about something else altogether? Like why, for example, is everything there in reference to FaceTime? So the patent was published on the 23rd of December. How about that? How about Apple just working? Mm -hmm. Just throw a patent out, December 23rd. Uh, holidays coming up, throw a patent out. Yeah. Uh, just file it. In Japan, I believe, it was uh, in the Japanese patent office, Oh, nonetheless. What were you eating for lunch? Remind me. Uh, onigiris. Yeah, stop uh, bragging about it, all right? I ate nothing. <laughs> I ate this coffee. And meanwhile, you got the Japanese rice ball with the filling inside. Uh, you can put whatever you want in there. Yep. It looks like they got a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. uh, what was inside of yours? It was... Uh Spicy salmon. Hey, man. And uh, Rude. another salmon teriyaki. Rude, yeah. man. It was great. I'm starving. Yeah. Yeah, you just popped that out of nowhere. Just like, give me two minutes. And all of a sudden, Will's got yeah. the, what is it called? Onigri? Onigris, yeah. Look at you. It's unbelievable. The life you lead, guy like you, it's unbelievable, man. One day, one day I might get to experience things like that. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, they, they, they file it on the 23rd in Japan, and this is the way that it pops up. And, and then we get the speculation associated with it, as you would expect. 
I don't think we're going to see a notchless iPhone 12, even though the headline here says that we're going to see a notchless iPhone 12, or we, we could see a notchless iPhone 12. I think instead, if anything, it's more likely that this is an indication of the movement towards Touch ID for certain models. Uh, will Apple do the combination? That's the other discussion topic to consider. Mm -hmm. Will they have the combo effect of face or fingerprint? Because it seems kind of un-Apple. You know, Apple, they're out there. there. There's one way to do it. Yeah. You do it the way, the right way, the Apple way. And so if they put the, the versatility in there, is it the fingerprint? Is it the face? I mean, they talk so much about how secure the, their face ID is. Mm -hmm. And then what? You have a typical optical fingerprint under the display. Ultrasonic, Samsung had their difficulties with that. Yeah. So Bringing is that... back a technology? Yeah. Is that Apple? I don't know. Maybe it's one or the other. Maybe it's for multiple models. Time will tell. Of course, you know me. I would prefer to have options right on the device. I want to have the ability. Do I want to use the face unlock? Do I want to use the fingerprint? Mm -hmm. I love the option. So my ideal iPhone 12 has both baked in, notch or no notch. I like to have the option with how I want to unlock it. Uh, we got some hot new, some hot new stuff in relationship to the next Pixel. Could the Pixel 4a solve all the Pixel problems? Is that a headline? I don't know. I we hope do, so. We're just doing headlines over here. Well, okay. On leaks, 91 mobiles. Talked about them already. What do you think about that picture right there, Willie Do? That looks hot. Did you say hot? <laughs> yeah. It actually looks pretty pretty good. Holy moly. Yeesh, right? <laughs> super hot. Super hot, yeah. It might even be super hot right yeah. there. Uh, so it's a hole punch, the way that the render's done. The camera module looks smaller. And the fingerprint scanner's on the back, which I, you know what, man? Mm. Those were all right, dude. Yeah. That's something I missed, in fact. In the Pixel 3. I don't know what it is. Call me crazy. Some people hated it. Rightfully so. It's up to you. You're a human being. You like some things, you hate others. A little bit of sweet, a little bit of salty. Mm. How do you feel about kettle popcorn, kettle corn, when it's got the sweet and the salty? Uh, They're good. But... Just, but? Uh, Chicago mix. Look at you. Yeah. You go all the way. Uh, yeah. Cheese, caramel. Two, two cheese and a caramel. It's unbelievable. Yeah. That's what the way to do it. Yeah. So, okay. So, you it's, everybody gets their own choice. So, you get the smaller camera, rear fingerprint. Cam the front camera moves to the corner kind of in the same fashion as the Galaxy S10 regular size mm -hmm. as it is right now. Although... Theirs was on the other side, wasn't it? This render puts the front camera in the top left corner. Mm -hmm. Wasn't it on the other side? It was, yes. Are you sure about that? Am I going crazy right now? Was it in the top right corner or the top left? Top right. Call me crazy, why don't ya? Top right. Okay. We can all chill. We can relax. It was in the top right corner. This render puts the front-facing camera in the top left corner. Of course, those that use the selfie camera a lot should know that you got to put a slightly weird twist on the thing. Otherwise, you're getting a it's an angular view yeah, of your face. It's like misshapen. It's an, you know, maybe not everyone's into that. Yeah. I don't take that many selfies or use the front camera that frequently, so that was never a big deal to me. In fact, I liked having it in the corner because I felt that it was less distracting watching video and things like that. There's nothing in the top. There's much less in the corner than there is at the cent central part of the display. Right. So it never really bothered me. I thought it was a cool look with the punch hole, hole, punch, punch hole. As they say out there in the internet, mm. inside of the internet, deep within the internet. They say hole, punch, punch, hole, hole, punch. It's kind of, it's like binary. It's like, yeah. it's like Morse code. Yeah. Yeah. So Pixel 4a, supposedly going to have a headphone jack. How about that? Oh, 2020 yeah. with a headphone jack. People are going to love this phone. They're going to finally change their minds on the entire Pixel brand because of this one phone. It's going to be affordable, Will. It's going to be a value play. Plus, it's going to have, it might even have a better screen-to-body ratio than the actual Pixel 4 and 4XL mm -hmm. because of the hole punch design. And uh, maybe people don't need the 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 crazy face unlock scheme. Although 
it works for me. Which phone are you using? Uh, still the Pixel 3. The so you're still using the rear. You're using this on lock. Yes. And it's, um, it's still good. I still like it. I like the, the form factor, but it's not as accurate anymore for some reason. The fingerprint scanner? Why. Yeah. You got to do a re-register. I, I have. Ooh, well, salacious, no, no, no. hot topic. No, this no. is a super hot topic. You're breaking news now. Well, Willie Do's breaking. Uh oh. It's the rock climbing. I'm pretty sure it's the losing of the skin. <laughs> it's uh, really screwing up the registration. There. You're out there on the rocks again, aren't you? Yeah. Right there. Um, so, yeah, I think that's why. Shout out to the rock climbers. Willie Do, he's, he's scaling mountains, yeah. no ropes, Mount Everest. I wouldn't say that, but. I mean, you just got back from a trip halfway up that cliff. Hang in there, Mission Her Impossible, heroine. Tom Cruise. Mm -hmm. uh, what's it called? Belay? No belay. Yeah. No belay. A mountain goat's trying to kick me off. Uh, with the what do you the put chalk. The, yeah. Chalk bag. yeah. With the chalk. So yeah, so I think we might actually see a device that could end up being more beloved by the tech community than the actual flagship, which is kind of strange and. What does it all mean? Hmm. The marketplace is changing, man. People, when I talked about the value concept, we talk about so much. This one, obviously, the A series, that's their value model. But there are some elements of this I think people will like. Some might be upset about the rear fingerprint scanner, but uh, I think when you're talking about a budget version, the expectation is some degree of compromise. And we all know with the camera setup, so much of the performance is on the software side now. So can you... Is it okay to have a single camera unit? For a lot of people, I think it will be. So this kind of gives you what you want. Give, it's going to give you the latest and greatest software, which is one of the... Uh, that's Pixel protocol right there. Vanilla Android. That's one of the uh, main attractions. Bottom firing speaker, supposedly. Uh, it's weird that it still has this, the square camera bump if it only has a singular rear camera. But maybe that's about the DNA. To, so people know it's a Pixel are able to identify it as a pixel. Mm. But nonetheless, this thing's coming out soon. I think it's going to get a fan following, and it may fix some of the uh, sentiment around the pixel lineup that's that's out there right now. Because every time I talk about the fact that I'm using a pixel, people are like, why are you using it? Yeah. What are you? One plus seven pro. Uh, <laughs> Samsung Galaxy Note 10 plus. They're just shouting phones. Yes, people just shout the phone name that they like better, and rightfully so. I mean, there are days when I use this thing and I say to myself, this could be a note right now. Yeah. I say that to myself out loud. And then the people that are around me look at me like I'm crazy. Like, well, yeah, I mean, what are you talking to your phone again? Huh? What, are you having a little chat with your phone again? He's lost it. Get him off the internet. Yeah. He's lost it. Cancel. You know. Ca yeah. <laughs> That's what they say. It's time to be Hashtag canceled. Cancel, Lou. For your psychological health, we're going to have to go ahead and cancel you. And I say, you know what? I'm ready. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so I might go back to the note. I kind of missed that one a little bit. And uh, and even the OnePlus, there, there's things I like and dislike about every phone, but it's it's actually, it's a beautiful time to be alive. Yes, it really is. Because it's like, it's slim, yeah. Slim differences and everything has gotten better, man. I remember we were talking the other day. I'm like, this whole review thing, this whole idea is under attack because of how good things have gotten. Mm -hmm. Because there's, it's a lot harder to run into a completely trash product. And by completely trash, I mean trash. Yeah. I don't mean uh, your battery life is one hour less because i know people get crazy man yeah in 2020 people get crazy. high high expectations demand and so forth but i mean more in a general sense humans have figured out some things smartphones are now basically one of those things what a time to be alive what a time to be alive round two tesla's cyber truck found its way into a travis scott music video so many people tweeted this at me and then i come in here to the studio and you tweeted at me except in real life and without twitter yeah 
You just tweeted it right at me. Yeah. Get that motion. <laughs> you, you, you got your tweeter going. Yeah. Speaker's got a tweeter and a woofer. So he's not only got the Cybertruck in the music video, he's also got, uh, what are they called? What are they? The Jack Boys? The Jack Boys. There's a lot of Jack Boys in there. All of them, I think. It's the whole Jack Boys crew is in there. And they got the, uh, the ATV as well. And the song is called Gang Gang. Yes. And it's a hot, it's a hot track in terms of attention. It's got a lot of views. And if you were a guy like Elon Musk and you needed and you wanted the Cybertruck to get out to a wider audience, you would arrange to have the Cybertruck in the gang gang music video. That's what you do. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. And you would even coordinate the ATV to be present for the music video as well. Yeah. That's how, that's how, that's business, Willie do. Mm -hmm. Now some, the speculation is whether or not the product placement was paid for or not, or if it was just cool enough for both parties where Elon can just hit up Travis and say, hey, Travis, Cybertruck, and Travis says, hey, Elon, gang gang. <laughs> that's the exact conversation. And they know exactly what each other means. Yeah. And it's all translated. And everyone's in L.A. anyways. Uh, Elon's driving it around to Nobu, and he's chilling and hanging out with the Jack boys anyway. Mm -hmm. So it seems easy. And now I'm going to go, I'm just going to speculate because that's kind of part of the gig, kind of what you do. Part of the conversation is to speculate. You got to fill in the blanks as best you can. I don't think there was a cash exchange here. I think it works on, I think it's a nice little barter it's deal. straight up exposure. But also it makes the video better. It gets a different group of people like us talking about the video, right? Without the cyber truck, it doesn't hit the tech community of the internet. Now, I don't know how big that community is in relationship to the, to the music community. I mean, it's small, obviously. But still, look at us. You know how many people tweeted at me? Cybertruck music video. Cybertruck music video. Cybertruck. So now this is people getting brought to the to Travis Scott and the Jack Boys that wouldn't have been there otherwise, like us. I mean, maybe you would have been there. I probably. I'm not gonna lie. It was trending. Number um, one. But I'm not gonna lie. I probably wouldn't have landed on that video without the Cybertruck. Uh. Just me personally in the day to day. Nothing against anybody. Yeah. I'm look. You do what you do. You're, you, 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 you put your stuff out there. You find an audience for it. That's how it goes. Yeah. I mean, obviously a huge following there. Now, the video itself, have you watched it? Yes. So they're in like a car landfill. Hmm. Do you think that has any motiva motivation to kind of show off the cyber truck? Yeah, so what was weird to me is the Jack boys were in the the dump or whatever the car what, what looks like a car uh graveyard yes what is the name for that i was trying to think of it myself there's dude. a name I for that right remember. isn't that just a junkyard junkyard, junkyard? i think it's just a junkyard okay which is always full of cars maybe I, maybe there's a different i don't know uh the jack boys they get they have to be in a junkyard and travis scott gets to be where the cyber truck is so are they just in different cities and they're trying to coordinate the filming, possibly, yeah. but or is there some other symbolism, like you said? I don't know. Yeah, maybe it's the new era. It's high tech. It's time for electric vehicles. For some reason, Travis Scott gets to be in the future, and the Jack Boys have to be in the past. Yeah, that was a bit weird. Which is not that much fun. <clears throat> it, I think it would have been cooler if they were all just around a cyber truck, but I don't know. I'm sure it was kind of a logistical thing, but nonetheless. Shout out to everyone involved. This is cool. I like when this stuff works out. When it doesn't have to be your typical placement, but when you really feel that both items are bringing some degree of value. It's interest for me because it's another place the Cybertruck is outside of the announcement and outside of Elon driving it. Yes. It feels like it's a thing that exists in the world now. Yep. And a rap music video is just that place where the aspirational vehicle goes. Mm -hmm. That's where you put it mm -hmm. traditionally. 
So I just think it's a good mix. And uh, I'm glad they, they brought the ATV as well. And uh, and that's pretty much that. It's, 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 it's good business. Yes. They got some... They definitely got 17 new pre-orders because of it. Because mm -hmm. you only had to give them 100 bucks too, to pre-order it. What other aspirational music video car can you just give them 100 bucks and like, all right, we'll give you that in a couple of years. Yeah. Start saving. <laughs> Rare Nintendo PlayStation prototype going up for auction. That's right, Will. I said those words together. Nintendo PlayStation. Mm. This is another thing that you tweeted at me today in real life. Yes. You said, this one's got to be in there. And I said, you know what? You might have a point here because that is really interesting. That, my friends, is an actual Nintendo PlayStation. And it feels weird saying those words together. As I suggested, it was a prototype. It's a one of a kind. And it was... It could have potentially, I mean, it, this device could have changed the landscape of gaming forever. That's right. It would have been. Um, I just felt like when I said forever, I, it was like a movie moment. Yeah. Change the landscape forever. What is that? Sandlot forever. Is it? Okay. All right. We covered it. Uh, Sony made this. It was kind of like a spec thing, right? It was trying to move towards the disc-based uh, gaming. I'm talking about CD-ROMs, ladies and gentlemen. And there was weird stuff at that time. Remember Sega CD? Oh, right. There's weird stuff. But then this one attempted to keep the cartridge spot. But then other elements are very Super Nintendo, including the controller, which is basically a Super Nintendo controller. Mm -hmm. But except it says Sony PlayStation on it. It's bananas. It's dry. My brain can't function mm -hmm. right now. I'm in trouble looking at that. But it was uh, some sort of a collab that took place, obviously, and never came to fruition. It never mapped out. And then maybe there was a disagreement. And all of a sudden, the dude who was working on it said, fine. Fine, Nintendo. You don't want, you don't, we're not working together? Then good luck to you. Good day, sir. Good day, sir, because this PlayStation thing, yeah. Yeah, I think we got something there. Yeah. To the moon. Probably, it was in Japan, so it probably, everything was probably way more cool than that. Uh, what was the thing you were eating earlier? <laughs> oh, Negri. Yeah, yeah, it was probably what it was. A couple of, they had a nice little meal, and they said, oh, okay, yeah, all right, good luck to you. Have a good one. Uh, I'll just make this PlayStation over here, and you make the that Nintendo over there. And we're going to have a disc, and you stick with that. You go make the 64. You go stick with the cartridge, uh -huh. and we're going to go with this little disc over here, and we'll see where you end up. Yeah. Crazy, man. Could have been a lot different. So anyway, this thing is going to go to auction. It's one of a kind. Apparently, there were offers on this thing up to $1.2 million. A real piece of gaming history or what could have been. Uh, this was made in the early 90s by a Sony computer entertainment engineer, Ken Kutaragi. And he was responsible for creating the, the Super Nintendo sound chip. So there was obviously some degree of interaction between the brands back then in the, in the early 90s. Sony was, was making hardware, Nintendo making software and some hardware. And so that cooperation existed. And uh, that's sort of where this thing comes from. But it never saw the light of day beyond these images here and this auction. If you have a, a spare 1.2 million, a guy like you, Willie Do, well, you got the uh, Taycan on order, remember? Yeah. Might uh, as well get this as well. You might as well throw this and you put it in a glass case. In my Taycan? In your glass, no, in your glass case room. <laughs> where, where you have all your things that are $1.2 million in glass cases. You could add this yeah, to that. I could. So it's a cool piece of gaming history right there. What could have been, we are talking, of course, about the Nintendo PlayStation. What? Ow. Mm -hmm. Painful. It's a painful thing. Speaking of gaming, 
you will not stop talking about this super hot thing. I brought it up today. I was like, oh, you know, super hot did pretty well over the Christmas season, over the holiday season. And yeah. Will was like, what did you, super hot? You don't play it. You don't know it. What's wrong have, with uh, you? I might have overreacted there. And I mean, he practically leapt over the table. He was strangling me. Super hot, super hot. Kirk was watching, just chilling. Otis saved me. He bit Will on the ankle. I was like, I said, geez, man, I'll try the game. I'll, fine, I'll try the game. Holy. I was just yelling super hot. I feel like Will's on a, he's chairman of the board over at super hot yeah. on his spare time because <laughs> it was very aggressive what took place. Nonetheless, uh, they say they shared this figure, $2 million is what the game grossed over Christmas week. And they say that the developer says they shared the figure because, not to brag. Mm. Although I, I don't know how you can share it without bragging, but not to brag exclusively, but instead to kind of showcase what's possible for a relatively popular VR game. This group, they want VR to happen, Will. They want it to take off. They want it to be a real thing because there's been this talk for a long time on both sides. In the early days, maximum optimism. VR for everyone. VR for the masses. Then it was met with, oh, that didn't really happen as fast as we wanted it to from people on the, on the flip side saying, like, VR's not ready. <laughs> and I guess what they're trying to put out there with this releasing this information is to say, yeah, it's kind of there. We have a relatively popular game. And also to indicate that, hey, over Christmas, some people, some people got VR. The game's 25 bucks. Mm -hmm. So if you got 2 million, if you gross $2 million at 25 a pop, it was $17 on Steam, 25 on what were you playing it on? Oculus Quest. Quest. You love it. You love Oculus Quest. You love Super Hot. Got to keep it all together here. It's twenty five dollars on Quest. So, since you're the math guy around here, <laughs> two million divided by twenty five. Uh. Well, I'm gonna have to look it up. I don't no, you don't. You're the math guy. Remember. That's the worst. Imagine being called. Imagine having that actual responsibility. Human calculator. What are you doing? Have you ever? Have you ever used? <laughs> I'm trying to put. I'm trying to write it down. Every time I say he's the math guy, he can't even do the calculation on Google. <laughs> all you need to do. Someone would get it right. All you need to do is look at this. I can do this quicker. Okay. We're gonna do it live with Google Assistant. Two million divided by twenty-five. Answer is 80,000. All right, Will, you see how it works? <laughs> Technology. Yeah. 80,000 copies, man. Hey. That ain't nothing. That ain't zero. It's not a million, but the game's been out. So what is it indicative of? Well, a lot of people got new hardware over the holidays. Some people got these Oculus Quests. A couple of people got them. And what they do, they boot it up and they went for super hot. Do you think that was a good move, Will, for them to go for super hot after booting up their new hardware? Oh, he's fixing his shirt in advance here. He's yeah. got a whole thing. He's got a whole thing. No, it's a, it's a great entry point. It blew my mind and Kirk's mind. When we got the Oculus Quest try to put this on Kirk right now. I'm just saying, it's a, it's a hot game. It's a super hot game. <laughs> wow, you, you really brought it today. Yeah. Ever since you had that Onigri? Yes. Like, woo, that's a new man over there. Yeah. That's all you got on Super Hot, though? <laughs> it's just a super hot game? Well, what What's the premise? What do we do in this game? What's going on? I haven't played it. Man. Well, it's a shooter. Yeah. Um, first person. And uh, when, uh, when you move, time moves. So that sounds great. When you, when you don't move, everything's frozen. So you can, like, figure out... What's your next plan? What are you going to do? Uh, plan of attack. And you feel like John Wick when you're playing that. Like <laughs> you're, you're grabbing weapons and you're just throwing it at people and people are, are exploding. It's, wow. it's a fun time. 
Okay, all right. And it's short enough where it's like, okay, you're satisfied after. It's not like it doesn't, you know, take. And so you you were you you've been playing this on Oculus Quest, which is, of course, you're not tethered, which you you say is helpful. Yes, definitely, because you do move around in a, a little space, and you just feel different knowing you're not tethered. I would imagine. Yes. Yes. All right. So you, do you do you do you say do you think that I should give it a shot? Yeah. In twenty twenty, sure. my twenty twenty New Year's resolution, super hot. Oh yeah. I'll Definitely. be one of these eighty thousand people to buy it for twenty five dollars. Uh. So yeah. So it, it it means that you. Ha- I mean, if you're buying it in that week from Quest, it means what they're basically saying is eighty thousand people got Quest. We know for a fact 80,000 people got Quest for Christmas, mm. pretty much. Yep. Now, there's probably even more that didn't go for Super Hot. They went for some other game as the first title they purchased. And there's some that probably didn't even purchase a title yet because they've just been busy over the holidays and they kind of just did the trial stuff. Right, so there's even more. So we could we have to, sales. of course, project based on that figure, but it you could have uh, maybe 200,000 quest over the holidays maybe 250 i don't know mm. so vr is not dead he maybe isn't moving as fast as people wanted but some units are out there mm-hmm. and and some people got it for the holidays so there's some kind too. of indication you should too you should too me yes you i should too <laughs> uh remember we were talking about these crazy displays that are popping up in cars everyone's that's the new competition it's like the home home theater once upon a time. How big is your TV? Well, now it's how big is your TV in your car? And it's not a TV. It's just a display because who watches TV? And the latest to join the giant screen party, of course, in the last time we were talking about the new Escalade where they are going to have a 38-inch display, yeah. but it's going to be in the wide format from the dash moving all the way over. Mercedes with the S Class, that's their top of the line luxury vehicle. They're going to go more in a direction of Tesla and others with the portrait style large display. And if you scroll down, you can give people a glance. Look at the size of that display in there. And it's in conjunction with a secondary large landscape display that lives in the dash behind the steering wheel. This is tremendous display real estate going on here. Mm. Now, do you. Do you feel, Will, that this is it could in any way distract you? This all these displays. No, I don't think so. No, if no. it has utility on everything, yeah, it's not playing like. What about the positioning of this central display here? What about the positioning of that? It's got an angle to it, but it does it feel like it's encroaching at all? Do you feel encroached upon? <laughs> no, not for me. Okay. Yeah. All right. I feel like it's it's. This is a difficult image to analyze because someone yeah. has like moved some blankets out of the way. It's it's, yeah, it's a lot of blankets because it's because it's a it's a they try to yeah. protect it right. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know. Are we supposed to see this image? Maybe it's leaked. Car scoops leaked intentionally leaked. Who knows these days? Twenty twenty. <clears throat> but they had to move some of these things that were covering the various elements, so you can't tell how it all fits together, and it's still. Obviously, prototype stages. So I'm sure the fit and finish, fit and finish will change a little bit. But nonetheless, it's coming into the modern era with the S class. And this is important. Increasingly, these interiors are about technology, they're about displays. Uh, who, who knows? Maybe you see uh, some new autonomous features in there. Mm-hmm. And now they're going to have to also compete on the multimedia because we did the previous story about how Disney Plus is coming into the cabin of Tesla's. So, so it's not enough to have the big display. You got to have these options on it now too. Mm-hmm. Granted, in the case of the Tesla, the multimedia makes a little more sense because you're at the charge station, right? And you got 20 minutes to kill, half an hour. With the gas-powered vehicle, I don't know when you're enjoying this. You're driving, but who knows? Mm-hmm. Maybe it's a road trip scenario. Maybe you pull over to the side. I don't know. Maybe you like to eat fast food in your S class. Yeah. Watch some Disney Plus. With Taco the, with, Bell and yeah, Disney Taco Plus. Bell and Disney Plus. 
Maybe that's the way you live in your S class. Mm. Guy like you. I don't know. 2020. I would. I, I, I already like the feeling of, of 2020. You do? Well, because I had the whole 2019 thing for a year. It had a ring to it. You liked it? Yeah. What? 2020? 2020. 2020 Whoo! I mean, it's the show. It's always been a show. The vision joke, you made it. Others have made it. Everyone's made it. Yeah. <clears throat> but just 2020. That sounds way more futuristic than 2019. Yes. It sounds one year more futuristic than 2019. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy it. Sketchy rumor claims Apple plans to announce high-end gaming MacBook in 2020. Hmm. Now, there's rumors in this life, Will. There's rumors, and then there's sketchy rumors. <laughs> sketchy rumor basically means we don't buy it. Rumor is 50-50, maybe 60-40. Sketchy rumor is... It's a 1% chance that it's happening. But nonetheless, it's got some attention here on Mac rumors because it's, it's a crazy thing to imagine. You try to imagine what an Apple gaming MacBook would even look like. If Apple were to make a gaming laptop, what would it look like? And I think that's why this rumor has got some attention at least and why it's worth imagining because... The MacBook has looked kind of how it looks forever. It even looks like PowerBooks. It doesn't even look that different. If you look up 15-inch PowerBook, which is a billion years old at this point, it's still got the aluminum. Granted, the keyboard changed to black at some point, but ultimately, the DNA, it didn't even change that much. And that thing is from, like I said, it's a billion years old. Power PC days. OG stuff. So what would an Apple gaming laptop... Because we look at gaming laptops from time to time. We just recently looked at a gaming laptop. It's always Transformers. It's always a Lamborghini. Yep. It's always Angular and vents and grills and things like this. How does Apple even approach that if they chose to? Well, granted, they don't necessarily have to do those things. Razor does something different. Mm -hmm. Razor is the... The block, the monolithic look. Could you just make a make the MacBook black? And you're all set. And and maybe figure out what you want to do with your GPU and how you want to tune it, what you want to do with your display, because you're gonna to have to get 120 hertz in there and all that stuff. Will Apple do it? You know, here's the thing. I feel that we're in a different Apple era right now. I feel like they're already doing things that I wouldn't have imagined them to have done. They're kind of breaking a little bit out of those really strict parameters for which products they attempt to approach. And they kind of have to because iPhone has slowed down. Slowed down in the sense that they had that impossible growth forever and then the adoption took place and now people have phones and they're not really upgrading at the same pace that they once were. So maybe if you're Apple, you start looking into different product segments. Maybe you start experimenting a little bit more. So the rumor comes from Taiwan's Economic Daily News. Mac rumor states that it's unsubstantiated. But then again, I suppose you could say the same about most rumors. Apple is said to be, according to this claim, working on a large screen laptop or all-in-one desktop with a price tag of $5,000, suggesting that it could be a MacBook Pro or iMac like device, but the computer is supposedly tailored towards esports, competitive video gaming. Hmm. Wow. It just seems strange to imagine. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Yeah, but if you're Apple, you, if you're Apple, you just did the whole thing with TV Plus. By the way, Kirk suggested what games do you play if you're on Mac? Apple is increasingly changing who they are and what they are as a business. They were who, who imagined them being in the content business? Who imagined them competing with Netflix? As you have to transition and make up for those profits and that revenue that iPhone can't deliver to you the way it once did, now you start to look at other segments and say to yourself, how do we get in there? They have the funds to do so. Why can't Apple make the next Fortnite? 
why can't they make the next hit? Why can't they make the next competitive game? I don't know. There's really no reason if you have unlimited funds other than you might not want to because you might feel it would change the general interpretation of your brand. But Apple Gaming, Apple Steam, why are those impossible? They really shouldn't be. If you're sitting around in that, in that boardroom trying to say, well, where are people doing things that we could change? Where are, what are the segments we don't exist in? If, if, if this wide variety of people has MacBooks, who are we missing and why? How do you go get them too? Exactly. That's the other segment. They got the people who are editing videos and editing photos. You want that premium customer who's spending a fortune on a computer. The last, the last group that's left untouched at the moment is the gamer. Now, it would be controversial because there's something about the gamer DNA that's anti-Mac, at least from what I've seen. So they'd have to do something big. They'd have to get a title, a flagship title. But we've seen that with, with consoles, though, Will, where all of a sudden you have Halo and the Xbox is on a scene. Uh-huh. If you can get an exclusive title that is the title to play, now I'm not saying that's easy to do, but I'm saying with unlimited funds, which is basically Apple's bank account, it's not impossible. Let's put it that way. It's not a 0% chance. Right. So anyway, I, don't, I still don't think it's going to happen, but I'm just talking right now. I'm just making noises. Yeah, I think Apple Arcade is sort of like a jumping off point because their their games are independent, at mm. least a, a lot of No, 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 but Apple helped out on the economics. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a key. So this is kind of like the framework of maybe building something bigger. Maybe. It at least shows you that they're interested in gaming. Yeah. But nonetheless, I understand if you're skeptical. I'm skeptical myself. Could we see a gaming Mac or something related to gaming, some kind of gaming hardware from Apple at WWC 2020? Uh, that takes place in June. So there's a little little while before we find out. But that's the rumor as it stands today. We go, we wait and see if it comes, comes to fruition. Mm -hmm. Fruition. Like a ripe fruit. Like a strawberry. A 7-Eleven in Japan might close for a day, and that's a big deal. What do you know about 7-Eleven, Will? They're huge in Asia, that's for sure. So 7-Eleven started in Texas. You understand that, Will? Did it really? Yeah, it started in Texas a long time ago, I think in the 60s, something like that. We got this article here in the New York Times, goes over the history a little bit. But... It was taken over by a Japanese-based company in the 90s, in 1991. Actually, 7-Eleven was started in the 1920s. Uh. How about that for a business? Started up in the 1920s, still kicking 2020. That's a 100-year-old business. That's a 100-year-old store. And they're thriving. Imagine, they, sh they should, do should do something cool for a 100-year anniversary. I don't know what yet. But they should do something cool for a 100-year anniversary. Yeah. Anyway, so they were super popular in Japan. So it kind of makes sense that now they're controlled by a Japanese company. You want to take a shot, Will. Take a, take a wild guess at how many, what percentage of, ja of Japan's convenience stores are 7-Elevens? Um, I know the main three. Okay, let's hear it. Let's hear what you got here, Will. So there's Family Mart. You, that, you, you, you're there's, damn right there is. There's Lawson. You're damn right there is. And then there's 7-Eleven. Is this because of uh, Strictly Dumpling? Is he who got you into this? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He does a, he, he he does a nice 7-Eleven video, doesn't he? There's three, like, main Family stores. Mart. Were we not at Family Mart in Shen, yeah. Shenzhen? We were. Okay, so they moved into China as well. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's the big three. Yes. In convenience stores, there's 55,000 convenience stores in total in Japan. 40% are 7-Elevens. Uh, that's big time. Yes. That's that's a lot of stores. And of course, the whole concept with 7-Eleven, 7-Eleven. 24 hours. Mm -hmm. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. 7-Eleven though. They're open. 11. They're open. That's it. Don't look too deeply into it. They're just open. 
if you want to know, they're open. And what's interesting, the culture, the convenience store culture in Japan, it's a bit foreign to guys like you and I. Mm -hmm. They perceive the convenience store as kind of a utility, as kind of a place that should be open all the time for an emergency, part of the community. Mm -hmm. Around here, the convenience store, mm, ain't what it used to be. In fact, we had a 7-Eleven across the street that shut down. No business, because people go to the supermarket a lot, mm -hmm. especially along here, mm -hmm. you know? There are convenience stores, don't get me wrong. But you have the gas station convenience stores often. Uh -huh. It's a different dynamic. Yes. It's different. But there, it's the foot traffic, it's the density, the convenience store is perfect. You can get all types of meals, like during the morning, afternoon, and dinner. Like you can get everything there. You know, come to think of it. Uh -oh. What's the problem? <laughs> You're thinking. Come to think of it, I I'm a big I like the idea of the convenience store. You do? Yeah, I just there's something now. I realize this is not fair to say, because I don't work there. I don't run a 7-Eleven, but there is something warm about knowing that it's always there for you. Uh-huh. This dude is mad. I should just deal with the store. He wants to close on New Year's Day. And the franchise says, you ain't gonna close, brother. It's against the rules. Or 7-Eleven. Get with the program. Now, he's been saying that his wife used to work the store with him. She died, and he's saying, man, I can't find employees. I'm in Japan. Population crisis. There's no new people. I can't hire anyone. Minimum wage through the roof. Hmm. I got to be here every day. I'm working 12-hour shifts. I, I got two other employees. Barely hanging on to them. Yeah. Let me take a day. Let me take one day he wants. And then they say, well, you take that day. What does everybody else do? 55,000 stores. We got 40%. Everybody take that day? Oh, what about everybody wants to take another day? I want to take 10 days. And you kind of lose the, the thing. The thing is the thing. It's an all or nothing type of feel. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's weird. I'm not saying the guy shouldn't take the day, for the record. I'm just saying it's a warmth to it, to know it's always there for you. And I understand what they're saying from a cultural perspective where what the convenience store represents. But we haven't seen a 24-hour... 7-Eleven around th these parts for a while. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, I mean, they still exist downtown. They're still there. And they're very different from Asian Very different, very different. I mean, if there was a 7-Eleven, Japanese or Singapore 7-Eleven around the corner here, I'm there. Yeah, I live in there. I'm there. But, th but you understand they got to compete with TNT. Yeah. So what's the difference? Well, the 24-7 thing would be. The 24-7 nice. aspect. Yeah, but Willie, dude, you're not going out 2 a.m. Uh, you're not going out 2 a.m., man. I don't know, man. Anyway, so he wants to close the store for a day. They, they, they've been, they're embroiled in an argument. But the, the, the cool takeaway, well, first of all, I'm kind of into this stuff right now, just on a personal note. Mm -hmm. I just, I find uh, this content to be interesting. You know, the, 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 the cultural component of, of just how things are, the convenience store in the West is kind of like a last resort type of place. Uh -huh. If you can't get it elsewhere or everything else is closed, fine, I'll go to a convenience store. But over there, it's embraced. Mm -hmm. And I just find that to be interesting in the different way that it plays a role in the community. And so that was a cool read for me. But apparently, it's breaking down a little bit as part of that culture, like I said, because of those factors. Because of the fact that you're unable to staff it. It's difficult to staff it now. And in the future... We, we, this this piece of culture may be changed, maybe not lost entirely, but it might be different than it has been. Mm -hmm. And there's obviously various various reasons for as as uh, for for why. Now this guy owns the store; that's the way it works. But Seven Eleven does the logistics; they bring in, you know, the various items to stock the shelves. Uh -huh. They want the stores to look a certain way. It's your typical kind of franchise setup. So. 
I don't know. You tell me, Will. What do you think? Does he does he shut down for a day? Is 7-Eleven 7-Eleven if they're open from uh, 7 a.m. to 11 p.m.? Like the name implies? What if it's What if it's not 24 hours? Does it lose something for you? Um, the appeal? No, I mean it's New Year's, right? No, no, never mind New Year's. I'm just saying if they sh if it has to shift with the culture completely, if oh. they just say, "Look, do what you want, store owners, have your own hours," oh. because the thing is, if you can't staff it, you're gonna everyone's gonna just pick typical store hours. Right. Eventually, I'm saying if they lighten the, lighten up on their grip of trying to impose that, you could. You could imagine them going more like a coffee shop, shop or something from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. or something. Uh -huh. But I'm saying, man, it's it's unfortunate because those that midnight or 2 a.m. convenience store situation, that's a fun time. Mm -hmm. And we've all done it. Yeah. We've all done it. It's tough. I, I would say take a break. Yeah. I, I you know, working too hard, it's... Uh, it's no good. Yeah, especially if it's like 4 in the morning. Right. And you're just like... <laughs> there alone mm. Mm. it's like who else is coming yeah or pick up the slack i guess maybe if 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 the franchise wants to somehow figure out a way to staff the place but that that appears to be the difficult part it wouldn't have been a problem if you had readily available staff right somebody would take the cash to work on new year's day i assume well wouldn't it be up to the franchisee then yeah, but he's he's staff. saying in this article he's saying he can't find staff. That's it. He's got these two guys. That's all he can get, hmm. and uh, so that's the the reason he needs to bail. I'm sure he wouldn't mind being open if someone was willing willing to work. In fact, it would be a lot easier to run the place if you could find staff. But yeah. apparently, across the world, man, it's an issue in in developed nations. I was listening to a podcast about uh, Burger King in uh, there's like the. Uh, one individual owner owns 500 Burger Kings, and he was trying to find a way to hold on to staff because he was he had locations ready to open and could not mm. spend all the money to get the thing. I think in Connecticut, get the thing all ready to go, and couldn't even find people to work there. Huh. It's a tough gig, man. Yeah. So, anyway, nonetheless, 7-Eleven. If you're in Japan, give it a look. Uh, just make sure they're open. <laughs> Oh, Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everybody. 2020. Year. We get to say it from now on. Uh, I'm still in 2019 when I'm saying this, but you're watching this in 2020, so we're officially in the future now. We were not in the future before. Even the year 2000, we were not in the future because people were saying stuff like Y2K and things like that, so it wasn't the future. 2020 is the actual future, and we're in it right now. So congrats. You made it this far, and uh, let's keep going together.